when you sit on a stage and you wrote a song five years ago in your back room somewhere that you basically wrote for yourself. I mean, most of us artists, I mean, I always like to joke about this, but we can't afford therapy, so we write songs, right? So, but you, for, the, for the most part, you, 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 you begin by writing for yourself, and then you find out later if it has any currency outside. So to hear that your song was not only capable of carrying an orchestra, I mean, what an honor, but then to sit on a stage and have those musicians surround you and just there's the texture is astounding. And we're so used to digital music, um, string patches, you know, they all sound fine, you know, but we sort of forget what this really, really sounds like and this organism and it just, it's so rich, so gorgeous. I think when this happens, especially in our day and age of, of exaggerated individualism, that this is a revolutionary act. The act of symphony is, is countercultural nowadays. And I think we in our souls know that we've lost something profound. And when we hear this, something knows it's true. Please welcome with your Edmonton Symphony Orchestra, Steve Beck. Thank you. <laughs>
we don't know how to do these kinds of things and he didn't have an arranger. It turned out my piano player, who's been touring with me for five years, who knew? The guy is, um, has got his degree in composition uh, out of Toronto. He's a brilliant uh, arranger. We didn't even know this. And uh, one day we were driving in the van and I was, was talking with the band and saying, boy, we need to find someone that can arrange this music. And then Mike says, well, I could do it. And everybody in the van burst out laughing. <laughs> and he says, no, I'm serious, I could do it. And so we're going, really? He goes, yeah, I studied for this. And, and uh, we're going, no way. And, 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 and then we made him pinky swear that he could. I was in over my head because this was the first arranging thing I'd done. And it took some convincing of Steve to sort of get him to let me do it. So um, it, was, it was a thrill, but it was also like a little intimidating at first. And uh, a few months later, these, these beautiful scores started to emerge. I took a look at them before the rehearsal, and, and they're fantastic, really creative, and, and uses the orchestra in so many f multifaceted ways. A sharp and A sharp. Here we go. At 53. She understands very well what the orchestra can do, so she, she tries to interpret that. It's not like a blanket of sound where the orchestra is just a background and the band is the foreground. This is a very much an interaction between the two. Playing with an orchestra, I definitely have to adapt uh, sort of a time flexibility that has to come into play. It's totally apples and oranges, just a different way of playing and expressing ourselves. Definitely makes you appreciate um, the classical world. This, uh, this next song is a song I learned in India. I met so many wonderful people and, and uh, there's where I learned this song, Deep Calls the Deep, which was the song that the young men sang every night before going to, to, to sleep. It was sort of their closing hymn of the day. It was just so, such a beautiful song, Deep Calls the Deep.
goes too deep And my soul finds no resting place but Him He is my God The yearning of my soul His touch can still And each rare moment I felt His presence I shall remember and forever cherish Deep calls to deep And at His feast I am a welcome guest He gives me food The hunger of my soul is laid to rest And each rare moment I felt His presence I shall remember And forever cherish I felt His presence I shall remember And forever cherish Okay, here's a little, here's a little ditty I, I wrote uh, several years ago, and uh, I'm, I'm going to dedicate this to Kim Zaglinski here, um, who's the, the uh, wife of my manager, Dave Zaglinski, who's back there doing sound. You can do a, give him a big hand. And... <laughs> so doing all right, everybody? <laughs> Okay, I, w I, was, I was writing this song, and it was kind of a little instrumental thing, and I, I couldn't come up with any lyrics, and so I was just kind of going doo 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 dee 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 throughout, and I figured I'd eventually come up with some lyrics. And, but it wasn't happening, and, and meanwhile, Kim and Dave were, were trying to have children, and they had a few sort of unfortunate starts and stops, and some of that was painful, and, but eventually this little boy showed up, Aiden, and he was just fantastic, you know, and he had all his toes and fingers and, and everything, and he was cute, which is always great, you know. Uh, it's really terrible when your baby's ugly, I know. It's, um, <laughs> But <laughs> Rick goes, oh, it's, it's a baby. <laughs> um, but, but anyways, no, but he, was, he, was, he looked great. You know, just a great looking little guy and, and uh, had a lot of character right off the bat. And then and it was just a couple weeks after he was born, Dave phoned me up and he said, Steve, I had this funny dream last night. You know that song, that little thing you're writing? And I said, yeah. And he says, I dreamt it's called Waiting for Aiden. 
And I thought, oh, perfect. Yeah, okay, I'll work with that. I'll try to come up with some lyrics. And he says, no, 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 in the dream it was, um, it was an instrumental. And I, <laughs> excellent. So, uh, so I was done, you know. So that's just kind of great. So, um, so this is it. This is, uh, it's just waiting for Aiden. This is for Kim. really gets kicking, everybody starts really playing, and you sort of feel that glory um, of what happens when 70 expert musicians all submit to one score. If I can get a dig in about my own faith perspective, uh, it's the Christian understanding um, that, that God is a communion of persons, um, a symphony, if you will, and that, that, that humanity has been created in the image of God, and that we, can, we only really know who we are or what it means to be fully human when we, um, when we live in love, in unity, in, in community, in unity, all those kinds of 
uh, those kinds of words. And so it seems to me that, that symphony itself, the whole experience of symphony, is theologically correct. That's why we like it so much. At Signpost, we're always, you know, sitting down and planning and, you know, scheming well, how we can, you know, do better concerts, do better ministry, um, you know, make better records, sell more records. And uh, but I must admit, this is nothing that that we invented. It was just something that came completely out of left field. Dave and I both noticed that whenever we sort of really push for something, um, it just ends up being less than we thought. And whenever we just kind of relax, take what comes, and then work hard with the gift that's given. That something great happens. I hear a lot of compliments from the players saying that was really fun and I really enjoyed that and sometimes when Steve makes jokes on the stage you know I see them chuckling which is a big thing for them you know to, to break out of their symphonic mode and and just uh, smile a little bit and enjoy the show. Being on tour with everyone is a blast. Steve is sort of like he laughs at everyone's jokes even if we're not funny. You know we have three-hour conversations about anything on the plane you know religion and, and <laughs> conspiracy theories and this and that, it's great. And he's, he's probably the most open-minded person I know. What I enjoy are the run-on jokes <laughs> that, that happen, spontaneous uh, whatever, whether, whether it be uh, just taking a, a, a topic to the umpteenth uh, degree or spontaneous interpretive dancing from any of the band members.
Any Coburn fans here?
I've, I've had a couple of these experiences in my life, of these sort of these profound experiences of what I just call the, the presence of God. Not things that I, I saw or heard, but just like a presence. I don't know how to explain it, I can't prove it. I just know my own experience. And uh, this happened to me in a Robin's Donuts once. I was uh, minding my own business, having a coffee, and, and uh, sitting at the coffee bar and reading a book. And, and all of a sudden, it just, the hair went up in the back of my neck, and I just sort of felt something change in the room. And then all of a sudden, it was like the air was on fire or something. It was just, it was power and it was majesty, but it was safe and it was beautiful and all those things all at once. And um, very, very unique and very, very overwhelming. And I remember looking around the, the, the place and you're kind of in this other dimension and uh, when nobody else seems to be noticing that God's in the room. They're just talking. And, uh, <laughs> um, but I knew, you know. <laughs> And of course, when you have these experiences, usually what comes along with it along is, is also emotion, of course, and you already know I'm a pretty weepy guy. And so, uh, you know, I, I started, you know, crying and my shoulders started shaking and I'm dripping bodily fluids over my hands and it was very unflu and unflattering. And, uh, and then I remember trying, trying not to um, um, draw attention by myself, but I looked up and down the end of the coffee bar, there's just three waitresses. Um, having a conversation about me and uh, <laughs> trying to figure out who's going to deal with the guy having a breakdown at the coffee uh, over there. And, uh, and so I kind of put my head back down and tried to control myself. And this one young, uh, she must have got the, the small straw or something. She came over and I remember she started, she, she started rubbing the top of my hand. And she, and she says, are you okay, sir? And I said, oh yes, this is a good day. <laughs> and. Uh, but, but right at that very time, this, this melody started forming in my head and this lyric started coming and I, and I knew the song was coming and you have to grab them when they come because if you don't take it, the next guy gets it, right? It's just, that's how songs work. Basically, they're out there floating around and if your antenna's up, you get it. But if you're watching The Simpsons, you miss it, right? So um, I guess mine was up that day and I had to grab it. So I asked her, I said, do you have a, a pen and a napkin? And so she brought it over and I, I wiped and started writing, you know, and... Uh, and the song, it's a, it just, it's, um, it just was all of a sudden there. It's called Even So, Lord Jesus, Come. Even so, Lord Jesus, 
Give a hand to Daniel Roy. Joe Fournier. And a special thanks to Mike for all the work he did on these scores and his piano playing and his friendship, Mike Jansen. And our friend, Ray Hatoda. And the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra. They're fantastic.
so much. God bless you. Thank you.